Okay, so we continue with our series of studies from the book of Revelation. I think we have been in this book for quite a long time, a few months. And uh, this few weeks, I think it's yeah, two weeks, we have been looking at the two witnesses. And so we are going to, coming to the finality of this series, the two witnesses. Today we are going to see the part three. And I just want to pass on review before we go into today's teaching. So these days we saw who were the two witnesses and a uh, lot of things we saw from the scriptures, not just any kind of, we just, we just didn't take some kind of, uh, you know, we just didn't take one verse and come into conclusion and interpreting it, but we looked at other verses and we saw who are those two witnesses. So the two witnesses we saw, the first witness is Jesus himself. The second witness is us, the church, the believers, the sons and daughters of God, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the ecclesia of God. We are the two witnesses of God on the earth. So, and last week we saw that there, that God, uh, you know, pours, gives power to these two witnesses. God gives power to these two witnesses. And we saw that Jesus has been given all power and authority. Right? Jesus has been given all power and authority. And in Jesus, Jesus gave us that power and authority. He gave us his power. The power of God has been given to us. And we also saw that, that the end time church, as these witnesses, have been, they, they, they were the ones who were prophesying. So the end time church is going to be a church that operates in a strong prophetic anointing. And uh, we saw that that the, in, the 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 kind of power that these two witnesses walked into that anybody who came to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth, as we saw last week, and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. So these have the power, and we saw last week that they have the power. So the church will be operating in such kind of power of God in the end times that. Uh, you know, that fire will proceed from our mouth. That means the word of God will come forth through us with such power, like it will be like a fire which will consume and burn the enemies, anybody who comes to harm the church. And this is going to happen during the seven-year tribulation period when the Antichrist will be ruling, when the beast will be ruling. And uh, so all those, and we saw that this uh, two witnesses they were prophesying for 42 months, right? 42 months and uh, how many years? 1,260 days. So which makes around three and a half years. So from that seven year period when the Antichrist will be ruling the earth, um, uh, from that during those seven days, during the, sorry, during those seven years, uh, the, the, these, the church will be ministering will be prophesying will be operating in such level of power during the from that seven years three and a half years God, the church will be operating in this kind of power yeah so verse six it says that these people had the power that they shut the heaven so that there was no rain that was that falls in the day of prophecy and they have the power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. So we see the church is going to be operating in such power that literally we can shut the heavens down and no rain of their prophets, uh, no rains are going to fall. And they have the power of almost like this sounds almost like Moses and Elijah, isn't it? Who walked in such kind of power where they literally shook Egypt and they shook Israel when they were there. And just imagine this, this, if the heavens are shut and there's no rain falling when they are prophesying, preaching and ministering and, they, and, and waters are turned to blood and also they will strike the earth with plagues. Now, this is where I want, last week little I touched, but I, as we go further today, we're going to see this, that these two witnesses had the power even to strike the earth with all plagues. And as often as they desire, it says in verse 6 of chapter 11 of Revelation. So, if these things happen, just imagine what will be happening in the nations of the earth. If there is no rain, if the waters are turned to blood, 
and if the earth is struck with all kinds of plagues as often as these as often as the witnesses as we say as often as they desire imagine what will be the condition of the nations every sphere of society will be affected every sphere of society will be affected isn't it every sphere of society will be affected if there is no rain just imagine the agricultural uh, aspect is going to be affected so many things are going to get affected in the so there's going to be a shaking things are literally going to be affected on the earth so this is the kind of power the end time church will walk into why because it is god that will be the days of god's judgment and nobody can stop it no man can stop it no political power can stop it even the antichrist the beast who will be there at that time he will not be able to stop it because we see while the beast is ruling these things will be happening the the beast that ascends from the bottomless pit these things will be happening and this is the devil of course so even he cannot he will not be able to do anything because this is the intensity of the power of god that the church will be walking in now you see it says that these witnesses in verse 6 of chapter 11 of revelation that these witnesses have the power to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire so you know it is difficult for us to understand currently currently in this period that we are in because we have not yet entered into the into this kind of power or or i should say that we have not entered into that time where we come we have come to the end of the age we're just progressing towards it just imagine because it says that the two witnesses have the power to strike the earth with all plagues because we know that god doesn't send plagues right <laughs> so when we read that these two witnesses strike the earth with all plagues what does it mean because it's going to be a time of god's judgment because jesus is going to come back soon and we are, that time we, are, we this time will be close to that time when jesus is going to come to the earth so during that time so we will have the power the church will have the power we i don't know we will be there or not at that time but the end time church will have the power to strike the earth with all plagues now we know that god we god is the healer but at the same time we must understand that god is also somebody who strikes who when he strikes in judgment he will strike with all sickness and plagues as well because if you remember in the book of exodus he says to his people israel he says which is for us that if you obey my voice then i will not let any of the sicknesses that i put on the egyptians to come upon you that means god not only heals his people but he's all he all when he when he judges people he also may judge with he may you know he may allow sicknesses to come he will strike he will allow sicknesses and plagues to be struck on the people when it is time for his judgment to come on wickedness so we have to understand all these things that that these witnesses will have such power that they will have the power to shut the heaven just imagine this <laughs> they will be speaking and heavens will be shut and they will have even power over waters to turn them to blood and they will strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire so this is the kind of power that the church will be walking into now what it is mean strike it doesn't mean that we go the church will be going around saying just because you don't like somebody <laughs> you look at the heavens and say let the heavens sh- shut down let the then you just go and turn the blood the water into blood and you because you don't like a situation you're angry and you're upset so you will pray lord strike the earth with the plague it's not this kind of power that the bible talks about when it says that these things will be happening what it means is we are going to the church is going to be carrying such level of authority that we are going to speak the word of the lord what god is saying on the earth so the end, so this is we'll be operating in that prophetic anointing 
And when we are speaking that these things are going to happen, as we are pronouncing judgments, the heavens will be shut, the waters will be turned to blood, and the earth will be struck with plagues. As we are proclaiming, pronouncing this word of the Lord, as we are prophesying, God is what uh, what I will be we are not going to be prophesying the heaven to be shut and all. But as we are prophesying the things of God, God's judgment will fall on the earth during those days. And God will start doing these things. And it says as often as they desire. Wow, that shows us that God shares his power with us. And that, you know, brings such a sense of responsibility in us. And we saw last week that this is the kind of power that Elijah walked into. This is the kind of power Elijah experienced. This is the kind of power that Elijah experienced. Because if you remember, he stands before Ahab and he says, Until I speak, until I speak, until my word, there's not going to be rain. So it, it was not Elijah speaking. It was actually God speaking through Elijah. So when it says as often as they desire, it is not according to, we will be coming into so much of like, we will be so much changed. We will be so much transformed like Jesus that on that day, everything that we do and say will be God and God alone operating and functioning through us. God will be speaking through us. God will be working through us. God will be manifesting his glory and his power on the earth through us. That's what it means as often as they desire. We'll be so much transformed and so much changed in the glory of God. Amen. And one more thing. The, you know, if you remember, the beast will be operating in miracles and deceiving nations. If you, if you remember, the beast uh, will be calling fire from heaven and he'll be doing all these great miracles and deceiving the nations. So on one side, there will be manifestation of demonic powers with miracle powers. But at the same time, those days, there these two witnesses we see, they also will be operating in great power. So it's not that it's, it's not that only the devil will be functioning in his great, great power. It's not that the devil only will be functioning in his you know, deceiving nations, doing false miracles. But we also see that these two witnesses will be having the power, such great power from God, that they will be manifesting the glory of God. Right? They will be manifesting the glory of God. Now, there may be some people who may be, you may, or if you may be listening to this recording, you may be wondering how can the two witnesses, one of the witnesses, how can the two witnesses be Jesus and the church? Right? You may be wondering because here it says that the two witnesses have were given the power, the two witnesses were given the power from God. And if you, if, you, if you read that these two witnesses walked in such kind of power that fire came from their mouth, right? Anyone who came to harm them must be killed, it says. And they have the power to shut the heaven. And they have the power that no rain falls in the day of their prophecy. They have the power to turn waters to, to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. So when we read these words, this be, some, some of you may be thinking that how can then the two witnesses be Jesus? And the church, because Jesus never operated in this kind of power. He, I mean, he never, he never, uh, you know, fire did not proceed from his mouth, correct? And uh, anyone who came to harm him must be killed. That didn't happen, right? Then they, Jesus never shut the heaven so that no rain falls, correct? And Jesus never turned water into blood. And Jesus never struck the earth with all plagues. So we, you may be wondering that when you read that, how can these two witnesses be Jesus and the church? Because Jesus never functioned in this kind of power. Well, the answer to it is this, that this is, for it is very important for us to understand that we are studying about the end times. We 
are studying about the end times we are studying about the christ the lamb of god who was slain who is alive and who is seated on the throne who has all power and all authority which has been given to him by the father so when in the end of the age we are going to see jesus manifesting this kind of power on the earth right are you under i hope you are understanding it so jesus now has all power and authority in heaven and on earth that has been given to him by the father so now this kind of power jesus will be operating in and of course because the church is in him and he has given us all power and authority we are going to walk into that kind of power and authority how is jesus going to manifest his power on the earth through the church so so this is the this is the kind of power that we are going to walk into god shares his power with us if you remember john chapter 17 jesus said father the glory which you gave me i give to them so that they may know that you sent me so that they may be one just as you and me are one right if you remember the glory which you gave me jesus said i gave to them the glory which the father gave to jesus he has given us the church that same glory not less nor more same and same power same authority same glory which the father gave jesus jesus has given it given this to us and this is what religion does not want us to understand this is what the antichrist spirit doesn't want us to understand that we can experience the same power that jesus walked in right this is what the religious spirit does not want us to understand it wants us to keep us in that mindset that we are humans we are sinners and we are this and we are that this is what the religious spirit doesn't want us to capture because the moment we start capturing this the moment we start understanding this the moment we start operating in our identity in christ the glory of god is going to manifest on the earth amen so let's continue with today's teaching quickly today's study we'll pick from verse 7 till verse 10 we read when they finished of revelation 11 when they finished their testimony the beast oh the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them overcome them and kill them so imagine this that the devil it says the this beast that comes from the bottomless pit from the pit of hell he will make war against whom against these two witnesses he will overcome them and kill them so we see opposition against the two witnesses we see opposition against the two witnesses we see opposition against this two witnesses and we see the beast fighting against these two witnesses and also he overcomes them and kills them and who gives this beast the power who gives this beast the power to fight against these two witnesses and to overcome them and to kill them who god himself and i don't have the time maybe next you know sometime when we study about the beast the antichrist will go into the deep in you know clear clear thorough study but god gives this the beast the power to fight against the two witnesses to overcome them and kill them so and this is true because the devil always opposes the gospel of jesus jesus and his power and his people the church yeah we see the devil coming against these two witnesses let's go to psalm chapter 2 verse verse 1 i want to show this to you this evening psalm chapter 2 verse 1 why do the nations rage you see here why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing so here it's talking about opposition against 
the Messiah, Christ and his kingdom. So it says, why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? Verse 2, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. So here we see, we are reading about political opposition because the kings of the earth and the rulers it is talking about. Against the Lord and against his anointed, against God and against Jesus. Verse 3, what do they say? Verse 3, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Verse 4, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. So when the nations are angry against the gospel, the nations are angry against God and against Jesus, What's go, what, what does God do? Verse 4 it says, he, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. When the political powers in the nations are opposing the gospel, uh, you know, standing against the gospel, against, against Jesus and his kingdom, what does God do? <laughs> God sits in the heavens and he, la and he laughs. He says, you boys carry on. And he, because, because you see, God knows what's the end. So he just sits and laughs. He said, he just, just sits and in the heavens and laughs. The Lord shall hold them in derision. So he will hold them. He will allow them to be deceived by their, by their own thoughts. He will allow them and he will laugh at them. Verse 5. What does it say? Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. So imagine this. God is going to speak and cause and how is God going to speak? God is going to speak to them in his anger. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in, in his, in his dis, dis, deep displeasure. What does he say? How is he speaking? Verse 6. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. Jesus. He's talking about Jesus. God is saying to these nations, to these political powers, that look, I have set my king, my son, the Lord his, Jesus Christ. On my holy hill of Zion. Verse 7. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. This is talking about Jesus. Verse 8. Ask of me and I will give you nations, nations for your inheritance. And the ends of the earth for your possession. Verse 9. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. This is what is, is God's response towards the opposition that comes. When the beast opposes the two witnesses we see this is the kind of power that the that that the power that god's uh, the power of god that will be displayed through the church jesus is going to cause verse 9 break them break this opposition with his rod of iron he shall dash them to pieces like the potter's vessel verse 10 now this is god again speaking to all the political powers on the earth Verse 10. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings. Who is the kings? The political powers, the governments of the earth. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. This is God saying, be instructed. Listen to what I am saying. Listen to my word. Verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Serve God with fear and rejoice with trembling. Verse 12. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. <laughs> so we see opposition that will come against Christ and against his church. Let's go to Acts chapter 4. If you remember in the early church, when the disciples in the early church faced opposition and uh, they were persecuted, beaten, and they came back and they came for prayer. And they came together to pray. Uh, Acts chapter 4 verses 23 to 31. And being let go, they went to their own companies and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. Verse 24. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Now this is what they prayed. See, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Verse, uh, chapter, verse 25. Now see what words they are quoting now as they are praying. Verse 25. Who by the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage? Now, what Psalms are they quoting? The Psalms that we just saw, Psalm chapter 2, verse 1. Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? Correct? Verse 26. The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against this church. So now they are quoting Psalm chapter 2, verse 1 as they are praying. Verse 27. 
for truly against your holy servant Jesus whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done now look lord look at their threats and grant to your servants with all boldness strange they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done in the name of your holy servant Jesus so they are, they faced a position the church we see Jesus uh being opposed and also the church being opposed and verse 31 says and when they had prayed the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the holy spirit and they spoke the word of god with boldness so we see the opposition there will be an opposition intense opposition by the beast and uh, against christ against his kingdom because the devil will do his level you know he will be when the days are near the intensity that he will oppose will be very intense when the days are near of the return of jesus to the earth once again the intensity by which the devil will oppose it it will be intense but at the same time we'll be seeing god's power being displayed in a very very powerful way and look what it says in revelation 11 further as we go <coughs> verse 8 and so this beast we see that he will make war against these two witnesses and he will overcome them and he will kill them verse 8 and their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called sodom in egypt where also our lord was crucified now this is very something that we have to understand clearly because it says that these witnesses will be killed and their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called sodom in egypt where our lord was also crucified now we know that this city that he is talking about john the great city is nothing but jerusalem now the great city jerusalem is not the natural jerusalem this is not going to be the natural jerusalem because the real jerusalem is the church now if you remember so it is actually talking about something something spiritual because it says which spiritually is called sodom and egypt so why it says spiritually is called sodom and egypt because jesus wasn't crucified in sodom and egypt where our lord was also crucified it says spiritually this city is called as sodom and egypt what is john trying to say here why sodom and egypt he calls it that the city is spiritually sodom and egypt because sodom and egypt both represent sin and bondage intense abomination so we are going to see these two witnesses we see will be killed in the great city what does it what does it mean it means the devil is going to attack the church in such a way that he is going to he he wants to shut down the voice the work of jesus and the church and that's what we're seeing we are seeing even today all this kind of false teachings all this abominable things have come inside the church right why because the devil wants to shut down the work of god he wants to shut down the voice of god he wants to shut down the work of the holy spirit so that the ch- so that the church doesn't rise up to be the light of the world he will try his level best and this where the lord was crucified so there is going to be i want to show you that this place actually is actually the church that is apostate the church it is actually speaking about the church that has deviated is actually speaking about the church that is apostate this is actually talking about a church that is not connected to jesus at all and has allowed all this the the spirit of sodom and egypt to take control of it because it is in this place that the lord is crucified that means in this place jesus is not seen let's go let me let me show you hebrews chapter 
i hope law i hope you will understand this what i'm saying yeah. hebrews chapter 6 so we, there is this is actually talking about the false church because it's in the false church what does the false church do the false church come against the true gospel the false church come against the the true church right that's what the false church the false church crucifies jesus again making the work of the cross nothing it takes you away from the cross hebrews chapter 6 verses 5 to 6 what does it say see and this talking about people who what this is talking about people who have who experienced the power of god who walked with god who experienced the power of the holy spirit but fall away verse 4 for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the holy spirit verse 5 and have tasted the good word and have tasted the good word of god and the powers of the age to come now see what it says verse 6 if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the son of god and put him to an open shame so these people this is actually talking about the apostate church who will leave god in, in those days who will uh and who have, i mean this this will be the church even that the church that walked in the power of god because here these people it says they have tasted the heavenly gift and become partakers of the holy spirit they experience they walked in the power of god they walked even they were enlightened it says in verse 4 so they had revelation they walked in the gifts of the spirit they walked in the power of god verse 5 they tasted also the good word of god and the powers of the age to come imagine this kind of people if they fall away it says to renew them again to repentance to bring them back into repentance what they will never repent it says since they crucify again for themselves the son of god and put them to an open shame so this is actually talking about the apostate church because those who leave god and fall into such abominable things i mean those who walked in the power of god such experience such realms in the holy spirit they had revelation and they fall away they turn away from god and to bring them back into repentance is very difficult because they are falling away is crucifying jesus again and bringing him to shame again so the so the beast is going to try his level best to shut down the voice of jesus through the church the true church he will try to kill the end time church the voice of god the prophetic voice i mean he will he will he will he will kill it and he will do it through the false church okay but look what further it have what what further it says so let's see the the thing okay we'll see it and their dead bodies will lie in the street okay of the great city which spiritually is called sodom and gomorrah where also a lord was crucified verse 9 then those from the people's tribes tongues and nation will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves verse 10 and those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them make merry and send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth so here we see this kind of hatred towards jesus and the and his church the people will be making merry it says and literally it will look as if the church is totally uh, overpowered by the beast and it will look as if the voice of god the activities of god has been killed and it will look as if we will be not we 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 the, the church will not be able to advance any more it will look the condition will be like that but but verse 11 says now after three and a half days the breath of life from god entered them and they stood on their feet and great fear fell on those who saw them amen 
we see the two witnesses were killed right and we see the two witnesses being raised up amen we see the two witnesses being killed we see the two witnesses being raised up isn't that something jesus died and rose again from the dead right and also we died with him and we were raised together with him hallelujah are you getting this revelation uh, you know we died with jesus when he died we died with him when he rose up from the dead we rose up with him and these are the verses that i want you to study further maybe later you can say roman 64 ephesians 2 from verse 1 to 22 colossians 3 1 roman 6 5 to 8 colossians chapter 2 verses 12 to 13 amen colossians chapter 2 verses 12 to 13 i want us to read just one one verse from that whole verse list that i gave you colossians 2 12 to 13 let's go to colossians 2 12 to 13 we were we died in jesus when he died so when we look at the cross we are not just looking at jesus alone we also were crucified with him and when he rose from the dead we rose from we rose with him and when he ascended to heaven and sat at the right hand of the father what happened we sat with him colossians chapter 2 Colossians chapter 2 let's go quickly to Colossians 2 yeah Colossians 2 verses 12 to 13 <clears throat> buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead verse 13 and you being dead in your trespass and the uncircumcision of your heart he has made alive together with him having forgiven you all trespasses anyways so these are the verses you can study later so we in that time we 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 died with christ and we rose again with him god raised us up with christ and also in the end times when it looks as if the church will not be able to move forward and the beast has killed everything suddenly the breath of god is going to come and is going to cause the church to rise up again Amen. It's going to cause the church to rise up again. It's going to cause the church to come forth in full power, to come forth in full glory of God. The breath of God is going to come upon the church. When the beast, all the powers of darkness, will come against the church, God is going to blow His breath and bring the church out of deadness, bring the church out of decay, bring the church out of decline. the true church god is going to cause her to be raised up again cause her to be you know to be to be to be uh, you know uh, to come into that place of glorious uh, glorious state glorious position the breath of god is going to be coming upon the church even today at this time we need the breath of god the breath of god is going to blow upon the church amen the breath of god is going to blow upon the church and verse 12 as we close verse 12 13 14 and they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them come up here and they ascended to heaven in a cloud and their enemies saw them verse 13 in the same hour there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city fell in the earthquake 7000 people were killed and the rest were afraid and gave god the gl- and gave glory to the god of heaven the second voice passed behold the third voice coming all quickly so here we see when the ch- when when the two witnesses are raised up again god is we see god's voice coming and saying come up here come up here amen come up here and they ascended to heaven it says in a cloud and the enemy saw them. didn't we weren't we jesus ascended to heaven that's that we know but didn't he raise us up and cause us to ascend with him and made us to sit in the heavenly places amen so come up here if you remember even john when he sees that vision what did god tell him come up here come up here 
and see the things that I want to show you. It was an invitation to come up into the heavenly places. It was an invitation to come and see what God is doing. So when the breath of God comes upon the church, God is going to cause the church to come to her real position, which is in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When God begins to blow his breath upon the church that is dead, what is going to happen? The church is going to come back to her position. She is going to find her identity. She is going to find her position in Christ. She is going to find her authority and her position in Christ. And it says that the people, when they saw the church rising, great fear fell on those who saw them. Great fear fell on those who saw them. Amen. So when, when the church rises to this kind of place, the fear of God is going to manifest on the earth. So the enemy saw it. And what happened? When, when these witnesses are taken up to heaven, in 13 it says, verse 13, In the same hour there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed and the rest were afraid and gave God, gave glory to the God of heaven. The second voice passed, behold, the third voice come. The moment they find, they are, the church finds their position in God, when these two witnesses are raised up into the heavenly places, there's a great judgment coming upon the city. Amen? The great, a great judgment coming upon the city. Great judgment coming upon the city. So when, when the church finds their position in Christ, when the, when the church finds their authority in Christ, when the breath of God begins to blow upon the church, the church finds a real identity in Christ. What's going to happen? In those days, in those days, the fear of God is going to fall upon the people. There's going to be manifestations on the earth. The earth is going to shake. Earth is going to rock by the power of God. Amen. May God bless this message to our hearts.